spring into summer by looking younger. Call Vein Clinics of Hawaii to schedule your free consultation today. Facial and body rejuvenation procedures are designed to help you look and feel your best without breaking your budget. Reduce pigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, scarring, and stretch marks with minimal invasiveness or side effects. Confused about which procedure is right for you? Call 427-5565 to schedule an appointment or visit veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Juliff of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Well, if you've been here before, welcome back. And if you just uh, stumbled upon us, it's your lucky day. <laughs> Do you feel lucky? Well, you're going to be glad uh, at the end of this program uh, that you met up with us. Dr. Julep is operating Vein Clinics of Hawaii. He's a medical director. It's in four islands, started on the Big Island, moved its way towards Oahu, which is kind of unique. Uh, Kauai, Maui, and here on the island of Oahu. Now, the office uh, specializes in, in venous surgery, but also there's a lot of other things going on. So we're going to have you um, write down the website a little bit later and also learn a bit more uh, from us as we go through. What we've been doing... Uh, on this program since it started several months ago is showcasing all different kinds of of, of venous conditions, whether it's venous insufficiency, uh, whether it's uh, perforator problems or valve problems, all these things that I've learned, you're going to learn. And when you become a just a semi-expert like me, and then you're going to realize how important it is to know what's going on in those things you call pins, legs, uh, sticks, whatever they are. And we're going to talk about those legs today. Uh, that's kind of a long introduction, but basically, I think most people think of vein surgery and vein issues as leg issues. And I think in the very beginning, I, I did, you explained it to me, it's because it's, it's at the bottom. So where we have problems in our circulation is at the bottom with trying to get that blood that pumps out of the heart into your feet to come back up and get, you know, rejuvenated so we can do it again. Right. Uh, yeah. They don't have to know anything else. That's the whole show. That's it. <laughs> okay. See you. See you later. No, yeah. But but seriously, I mean, is uh, is gravity at fault here? Is oh that the yeah. yeah. Well, gravity p- plays a huge role in veins and how they function. Uh, and and yeah, basically what you you said is right. Uh, blood through arteries. Now, arteries are the blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to the rest of the body. Uh, and blood through arteries moves because the heart is pumping. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so with veins. It's yeah. not like we've got a whole bunch of little hearts at the periphery of our body pumping uh, yeah. blood back up. Be uh, nice, but vein. we don't. Yeah. We don't yeah. um, so they, uh, the veins rely on a system of valves and also the surrounding musculature of the leg uh and yeah it's a particular problem in the leg uh because it is the furthest down and there's the greatest amount of what we call hydrostatic pressure uh at the lower part of the leg you know years ago on a trip to new york i was able to go to the to the subway headquarters and when you see how many people and monitors and machines there are guiding that system around it makes you think of the right. body a little bit yeah, you know? yeah and seriously i mean if the if the middle of that big room was the heart was the computer right if it wasn't sending out the right the right information to all those places there would be problems isn't it kind of like that's kind of what we got going on here yeah, yeah. well the body in general is a very complicated yeah. system but uh it's got you know, it has come together yeah. beautifully when we talked in the past about different case studies, and from time to time, folks, we actually have patients come in and join us. It's really enlightening. A couple of weeks ago, you heard that when our, our friend uh, uh, Warren uh, Bradshaw was there, it, happy to talk to us. And if you are a patient of Dr. Julison, you know, you could, next time you're at, by the office, say, Psst, I wouldn't mind being on the radio. I would take care of you. But we're, today, we have a different case study. This is a guy. Um, and usually when you think of vein disease, in the past we've been talking about thinking about women a lot. Um, and I guess today is going to say, well, we're an equal opportunity disease. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, that is one of the misconceptions of uh, vein disease, that it's primarily uh, a problem that women have. Uh, and not so. Uh, you know, probably 40% of our patients are men. Uh, and the other, you know, misconception that we have to fight all the time is, uh, oh, vein problems are just a cosmetic issue. 
um, doesn't really have any basis in mm-hmm. a medical problem, yeah. uh, but that's completely uh, not uh, not accurate also. Um, I do know from personal experiences, there's a number of ways that you can be symptomatic and think it's one thing, but it actually is another. Right. Um, today, this guy, we're going to talk about uh, legs uh, and particularly swelling of them. And I've learned, I don't want to say the hard way, but I've learned that there are several different ways you can have swelling in the legs, and I've experienced more than one of them. So yeah. it's, 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 it's easy to conceive or to accept that there are probably many people listening that have more than one thing going on that looks like it's the same problem just because it's in the legs. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah swelling in, in the lower extremity in the legs uh, has yeah a, a whole host of reasons why that might happen. Uh, number one. Number two... It's it's very common for people to have more than one reason why they're developing mm-hmm. enlargement of their legs. Uh, and uh, as we'll see in the patient that we're going to talk about today, he, he had more than one. Yeah, so we have, yeah. had to sort of sort it out. But this was a, a 52-year-old male, you know, again, uh, mm-hmm. male. Um, and he had, he had enlargement or swelling in both of his legs. A little more so on the left. Mm -hmm. So you you kind of have to take that into consideration. Is that part of the picture? Um, Is it graduated swelling from the bottom up or from the top down? From the bottom up. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Yeah. he he definitely had much more at the bottom, and then Mm -hmm. it uh, kind of lessened uh, as it made its way up the leg. Uh, But he had been wearing compression stockings, which is, you know, kind of the first line of defense Mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, swelling of the legs. Uh, he was uh, prescribed uh, medical grade compression stockings by his uh, primary f- uh, care physician sometime before he actually came to see us. Which is pretty pretty good for a PCP to say, hey, you better do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, More and more are, I guess. So um, he had been wearing them and uh, he didn't really see much improvement hmm. over time. So that you know, that's a clue right there. You sure, know what, yeah. what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it was strictly fluid due to you know, bu- you know, increased body fluid, or for other reasons having to do with uh, heart function and that kind of thing, you would you would expect that compression would have a substantial impact. Yeah. So a uh, little bit of a clue. So, okay. Now that that means, for instance, and, and I get the bit about the stockings because I've been wearing mine fairly religiously for a long time. However, I do know that sometimes they work better than others, and that's maybe because even in my legs, there's more than one thing going on. Very because I, I remember one time my my granddaughter says, "Hey, Papa, where's your ankle?" Yeah, I didn't realize that that my leg was swollen to a point where the ankle was not being couldn't wasn't see the defined. Ankle. Yeah, couldn't yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's well, one of the ways that we kind yeah. of describe the yeah. amount yeah. of edema that somebody might be having. Um, but uh, he had some other complaints too. Mm. He was he was saying that his legs were uh, becoming fatigued easier yeah. than they used to be. Uh, there ha- he had a feeling of heaviness, achiness, muscle cramping, uh, and he had some varicose veins. Although it wasn't a yeah. huge amount. I-, I see hands going up all over the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's laughs> yeah. that. You know, because I think that in some respects, almost everybody has some condition there sooner or later, mm-hmm. temporary or permanent. Yeah. You know, and, and when you say heaviness, um, let's talk about that because from what I understand, if you have like edema or a lot of, you know, fluid buildup down there, it, it can be several pounds worth of liquid. It can definitely yeah. be that So no much. wonder it's heavy. Uh, yeah, well, from just from the standpoint of the fact that there's increased fluid, yeah, yeah your yeah, leg's yeah. going to probably feel heavier. However, interestingly... Uh, even people with uh, not a lot of swelling, but they have venous insufficiency, mm. you know, uh, yeah. in general, um, those people also have a feeling of heaviness in their legs, too. So mm-hmm. uh, heaviness is it could be a symptom of just fluid buildup. It could be a symptom of underlying venous disease. Uh, or it could be something else, but uh, so we're you know kind of taking all of these things into consideration in well, trying you know, to figure well, out what's going on. Sometimes, Doc, I'm wondering if you know the symptoms and the condition flutters in and out. I mean, sometimes it's not serious to the point where every day you wake up and your legs are swollen or hurting or heavy, but it happens once a week, or maybe it happens on Monday after a weekend. Mm-hmm. Maybe by process of elimination, we can have some of our listeners sort of examine what sort of schedule they're on and see if there's a correlation between when their legs are swollen and when they're doing one specific thing or another. Yeah, 
That, well, that, that as it pertains yeah. to diet in particular? Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people say, uh, you know, gee, I just ate too much salty food yeah, this weekend. Yeah. I was drinking too much beer, and, you know, the, the, the swelling gets worse. Well, I can tell you one thing. I've noticed a marked difference in, in the workers that I work with during football season than not. I mean, if you have the University of Hawaii game and four <laughs> pro games and Monday night football, yeah. and you're prone with beer and right. salty things, yeah, exactly. you're going to pay the price somehow. Yeah, Monday, yeah. Monday morning. Yeah. So uh, anyway, and he, uh, in addition, he had some discoloration of the skin of the lower legs. Um, now this is getting a little bit more serious. Yeah, yeah. Are you right. Yeah. That you know that especially as it pertains to you know venous disease, uh, when we start to have skin changes of that sort, that's a little higher level of uh, you know venous problems. Uh, and he had some dis- he had discoloration on both sides, a little more so on the left. So mm-hmm. he had a little more uh, swelling on the left, a little more discoloration of the skin. So the skin was starting to uh, change in its quality. Mm-hmm. Um, when you say uh, it more the, on one side than the other, um, from what I understand, at least with me, it's never the same on both sides. There's always some sort of a difference. Uh, as a matter of fact, isn't it interesting the way some people, when they go buy shoes, mm-hmm. they say, I want to try the left one. Yeah. Because they know the left foot's a little bit bigger than the right foot. Right. So if they get one that it's perfect on the right foot, it might not even fit yeah. on the left foot. Yeah, that's true. So is, is that also true with the conditions in effect? One leg more than the it, other for that kind of reason. Sure, yeah, yeah definitely, um, it, and that's that's pretty common that we mm-hmm. see more more uh, signs and symptoms on you know one leg than the other, mm-hmm. um, and a little depends on what the cause is. Uh, the I guess the the more important thing would be, gee, did this patient does this patient have a bunch of signs and symptoms on one leg and the mm-hmm. other leg is perfectly normal? You know, then that uh, you know that kind of gets us thinking in a little different way. And uh, probably we're thinking about causes that are uh, different than if they're being affected, if mm-hmm. both legs are affected. So um, the skin uh, was dry. Um, he, uh, and, you know, many people with advanced venous insufficiency, uh, they can have fluid retention in the lower leg. Uh, that actually the the skin begins to weep, but we've talked about that. Before. You, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head because as you were saying that, I recall I recall other con, other uh, conversations where the opposite is true. Instead of dry, mm-hmm. your skin is wet, right. and you look at it and you can't quite figure out. You know, what is this? Is it perspiration? Is it bath water? What is it? You mm-hmm. know, yeah. And uh, I, from what I understand, it can be volumous. Volumous. It can yeah, be right. a lot. Yeah. It, it can be, yeah, it can yeah. be, yeah. It, it becomes a real problem with some people uh, with, uh, you know, with weeping from the skin, and it's hard to manage, quite yeah, frankly, yeah. you know. Especially but, if you're hanging out at work. You know, yeah, like yeah. So uh, so that was another little bit of a clue. I mean, the mm-hmm. skin was dry, and, um, uh, you know, it. He, he didn't have all of the signs of real advanced chronic venous insufficiency, although he had some. You know, mm-hmm. he had varicose veins and you know, the discoloration, et cetera. So when we, when we examined his legs, uh, his feet were warm. Pulse, mm-hmm. Pulses were good. So, you know, we do that. We're assessing yeah. the blood flow down. You know, when you say warm, are you talking warmer than, say, normal? No, no. no when, when, yeah, yeah norm, warm is good. normally yeah, warm, yeah, 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 yeah as opposed yeah, to yeah. cold and pale. Yeah, gotcha. okay. um, but uh, yeah, so the, the feet were warm and the uh, pulses were there, easily palpable, easily felt, um, the, which is a typical part of the examination to make sure that the blood flow down to the feet and legs is adequate. And it seemed to be. Um, we there's this thing called capillary refill. That is part of the usual examination mm-hmm. of somebody, uh, and as it pertains uh, in particular to arterial blood supply. And what capillary refill is, is that, you know, you pinch an area of the toe and you see it blanch. Mm-hmm. You know, if you put pressure on sure, it, the yeah. redness is going to go away. You let up and that redness comes Just back flushing, immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, that that's indicating that there's good blood flow. Mm-hmm. Someone who does not have very good blood flow and consequently capillary yeah. refill, but you blanch the toe and it takes a little yeah. while for the redness to come back. I've noticed a similar uh, a test where you t- take a, the, the leg that has the edema and you press gently your thumb or your finger in it, yes, and it makes a, a it pits. 
Right. And then when you relieve it, it fills back up again. Yeah. That shows you, number one, that there is a lot of fluid in there. Right. And number two, that um, it's not going away. Yes. You know. That's a that, that's a good a good point, Mike. Because that was the next thing I was going to talk about. But uh, I mean, I've been doing this. I, I just get anticipation, like <laughs> like the horse ready to get out of that thing yeah. and run. So um, he had he uh, he had substantial swelling in both legs, but he did not have pitting edema. Okay. So yeah, yeah. pitting edema. You put your your thumb or your finger yeah, right. in an area of edema, and then that little you know gully stays yeah. there for a little while. Uh, but he did not have that. That's interesting. What about what they call orange peel uh, edema? You know, where it's or or orange peel looking legs. Right. Yeah. Is, is that another form of of edema or swelling? It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another form mm-hmm. of you know even more advanced uh, yeah, you know, yeah, s- yeah. edema in the skin. That, that's when it gets. You know, not only do you have uh, excess fluid in the soft tissue, but now it's coming yeah. into the skin. He did not have that. <coughs> so. Um, so no pitting edema. Um, and then the other thing that was noteworthy in this patient was that his feet looked relatively normal. Okay, yeah. So he had these big, big legs mm-hmm. um, and, uh, you know, abnormal skin on the lower part of the leg with the discoloration, although it was dry and relatively normal feeling. Then don't tell me, little bitty feet at the bottom of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. So yeah, that's yeah. unusual. You know, it's funny because... Um, I, my, my shoe size is 13 mm-hmm. and I've often said to people, they say, well, the, your feet are pretty big. And I say, well, they used to support a pretty big body. I think that's a lot to do with it. I mean, you know, your body does what it needs to do to accommodate what you do with it. Oh yeah. You know? So, yeah. but, but isn't that amazing that you can trans, you can transpose it or you can d- decrease the swelling enough so that you can see a smaller foot and right above the ankle is a bigger leg. Yeah. You think, why isn't the whole thing big? Right. Well, uh, again, that, that's a little bit of a clue of what's going on with this you know, patient, um, because uh, most of the time, for instance, in chronic venous yeah. insufficiency, if somebody has swelling, then it's going to affect not only the lower leg, but the feet, too. I was going to ask you that. The next question was, as part of the same flow, flow of thought, I've noticed sometimes that feet can be very swollen. Oh, yeah. And, and, and almost to a point where they look like... How can that person walk around? That must be that must be sore. Yeah, yeah. Or it, it, maybe they're just used to it. Very possibly, yeah. uh, but you know, most of the time when we're seeing people with uh, edema of the legs, most of the time their feet are affected. Mm-hmm. You know, most yeah. of the time the yeah. feet are not normal yeah. looking. They're also uh, edematous and swollen. Um, so he had uh, he had varicose veins. I think I mentioned that before, uh, and they were a little more prominent on the left. Uh, varicosities were on the anterior portion of the thigh on the left, and they sort of wrapped around the outside mm-hmm. of the leg and into the calf, so that you know that that's a fair amount of varicose veins and um again it's sort of uh, a sign of what may be the underlying cause for all of this with all what was going on with this guy, did he have any signs of or are we getting into that later of having um you know any uh any vascular or vein ulcers in that leg in those legs he did not Mm -hmm. yeah which means which is another good point yeah yeah, i was going to ask about that and uh yeah important to the uh you know the differential diagnosis because he um he had plenty of skin changes that were there um but he it had not gotten to the point where it would be uh, to the you know to the severe enough to Mm -hmm. develop ulcers so that that's another important point in kind of trying to put the whole picture together um, the legs were not tender. Huh. So when we, yeah, when yeah. we, you know, when we palpate or, you know, just touch various parts of the body that, you know, that might be affected by some disease process, uh, you know, it, and also in people with venous insufficiency, or especially if they've gotten to the point where they're, you know, possibly developing ulcers, usually there's a little bit of pain there. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. And a little pain, it, sure. sweet. You squeeze their legs and they feel it. So mm-hmm. in this guy, he he didn't. It was completely normal. You know, sometimes I guess people delay getting examined because something in their mind tells them to lie down or or, or to elevate your legs, and they just do that. Mm-hmm. I know people that do that that I talk to all the time that didn't even realize they were doing it. 
Mm-hmm. But one of the things they do is when they're at home after work, they're watching that five o'clock news. It's from a chair with their legs up. In the right. Air. Yeah. And, and we yeah. ask that question all the time because, yeah. uh, again, that's kind of an important point uh, with respect to venous insufficiency. When people have significant venous yeah. insufficiency, that's exactly what they do. You know? yeah. And we ask them, do you go home at night yeah. and put, put, put your legs up because it feels better? I got to tell you another one. This is a friend of mine. Uh, he and his wife. Um I don't even know what, what prompted this, but they were talking about their bed uh, to, to another couple, and they, they realized that they'd had their bed for 20 years. And they thought, you know, there's probably been some changes in bedding. You know? Yeah. And maybe this is, these. maybe I got a sore back, maybe it's because of the bed. Sure. Maybe the bed's just, no more springs, they're sprung or whatever. Anyway, they went and bought a mega expensive bed right. that almost does... It almost takes you to the store and, and shops for you. Yeah. It's everything. And they said it made such a difference hmm. that they're both able to elevate different parts at different times. They're still in the same bed. Yeah. And at the end of all of the mechanical stuff, it lies flat and it's a bed. Or, or it can elevate your leg. Look at the developments that have been that. And I would imagine that sometimes you are almost prescribing to a patient, you need to elevate. And Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we tell that to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Um so what do we do to, uh, you know, further... Yeah, how do we take this guy and say, all right, here's what, all the things that are wrong with you? Or, yeah, so where do we yeah. go from here? What do you, you got? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that we might be concerned about is uh, arterial blood flow. He had good pulses. He didn't really have any signs or symptoms of what we call, uh, you know, arterial insufficiency or PAD, as mm-hmm. they talk about on the news these days. Um, so we we weren't really concerned about doing an arterial ultrasound. We were concerned about doing a uh, venous duplex ultrasound because he certainly had plenty of uh, signs mm-hmm. and symptoms that could possibly be due to chronic venous insufficiency. Okay. So we did that. Um, and the uh, venous ultrasound showed reflux or, you know, venous insufficiency, mm-hmm. veins not working properly. Uh, in uh, the two main superficial veins of the leg, the greater saphenous vein, the small saphenous vein, in both legs. And then on the right, he also had, oh, no, I'm sorry, on the left, he also had reflux in a vein called uh, an anterior accessory vein. That's mm. uh, kind of, we call it accessory veins because not everybody has those veins. Um, and also any one person if they have an accessory vein on one side, they don't necessarily have it on the other. But he had it on the left, and it was unfortunately not functioning properly. Interestingly enough, is, does accessory mean that there there would be a greater use of that should the need arise? Uh, you know, when you say accessory, it's extra, right? Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, hmm. yeah, yeah, it's if it's functioning properly, it's going to be doing a little bit more of the job. Yeah, yeah but not not that that yeah. would make a significant difference in how well you know one leg yeah. was working as opposed to the other. Yeah, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of people ask. We've had it come up many times. Is okay. How many veins? How much treatment can you go through? How many veins can you remove before your legs don't have enough veins in them anymore to do the job? Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people worry about that. And I've always thought that, well, what you've explained, you know, terrifically in the past is that, all right, well, what happens is um, you have to, you know, get rid of it or collapse a vein that has got venous insufficiency is not working right. That blood's going to find another way to get there. It's going right. to create new channels. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, yeah, the way that we treat uh, superficial venous insufficiency these days is to uh, close down the vein that's not functioning because that vein is not doing anybody any favors. Uh, And uh, the yeah, your body, uh, the being the miraculous machine that that it it is, is, reroutes the blood to normal veins and then it comes back up. Is it you know, is it instantaneous or? Pretty pretty much right away yeah, because really, obviously it must be. It really yeah. is right yeah. away, yeah. Because you know you we close that vein down and the yeah. blood's got to go gotta somewhere. Got to go somewhere, yeah. So okay. uh, so anyway, uh, he had uh, superficial venous reflux, and um, can that cause uh, swelling and enlargement of the mm-hmm. leg? Absolutely, yes. Um, did we feel that we were dealing with only chronic venous insufficiency in this patient? Probably not, mm. because there were just there were some things that were uh, too inconsistent with chronic venous insufficiency alone. For instance, the fact that his feet were completely normal in appearance, mm. did not have any yeah. swelling. Uh, the uh, the skin, although he had discoloration, 
uh, was not uh, otherwise typical of chronic venous insufficiency. So, uh, and also the fact that he did not uh, respond to graduated compression therapy. Yeah, the, the compression stuff. Yeah, this guy. But you know, interestingly enough, um, these discoveries that you go through. I want people to understand that it's rel- relatively quickly. Once you get a patient and you're starting to do your checklist of examinations, you can very quickly mark the boxes that apply to this guy. Mm-hmm. So it's not months and months of tests and studies oh, no. to find out how to treat me, or even if I need treatment, it's pretty much right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we try to you know sort through it all at mm-hmm. the same time, and then you know go from there. But um, so uh, the um, the the swelling was probably not fully due to chronic venous insufficiency. However, he had venous insufficiency. So is that should we treat it? You know, is that a reason to not treat his, yeah, yeah, his so venous want, reflux? Yeah. And, what happened to this and, guy? And no. So, yeah. so you know, we, we typically, even though we might suspect that there is more than one cause for chronic swelling of the leg, if they have venous insufficiency, then we do want to treat that because mm-hmm. it's easily treated. And we want to optimize the overall function of their venous system and uh, their circulation in general. I would look at that as a bonus. Because what if you do that and the condition that you were doing it for didn't heal? That means, well, that wasn't it. However, that certainly means that what would, what would have gone wrong with the ones that you fixed aren't going to go through that. Right. You know, they're going to be in good shape. Yeah. But, I mean, I would imagine, and I already know this because I'm a patient, um, not a patient patient either. I like to know right away what's up here. And I do know that that being the case, that we are all in an instant gratification uh, system. We all want to know, okay, where am I? And, you know, how are we going to fix me? And, oh, by the way, I've got a high school reunion I'm going to next month. Let's get it fixed all by then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah sometimes so, we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, try as we might. Um, anyway, so this guy um, must have at one point in time started to indicate his um, either gratefulness to, to help helping him find out what's going on or saying, wow. You know, I had no idea. I'm glad I came in. What are we going to do about it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah this is another, uh, you know, uh, individual that uh, had struggled with this for quite a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, this sort of thing didn't come up overnight. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he hadn't really investigated it fully. Uh, and so, yeah, he's, so, you know, we're, we're trying to make progress and uh, help him feel better about his leg function, you know, at the same time. But. Uh, so we did, uh, we treated his venous disease and we did what's called radiofrequency ablation of the, uh, of the axial veins uh, that we saw reflux in. And uh, radiofrequency ablation is a uh, catheter that we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it uses radiofrequency energy. It heats up the inside of the vein and uh, basically heat seals that vein and like we said before we close that vein down um and uh, you know typically that uh, the vein is not functioning yeah. because of uh you know abnormal valve function we, we mentioned these one way valves mm-hmm. um so uh, we ablate the vein the blood gets rerouted and uh, the circulation in general is improved okay now do we clean up the beach or does it stay in there and just go away on its own it it, it stays in mm-hmm. the vein yeah, stays yeah. in the leg and uh, and yeah, over a longer period of time, the body actually kind of breaks that yeah, vein yeah. down because it's non-functional. Uh, and uh, typically, when we look at these uh, ablated veins a year down the line with an ultrasound or whatever, it just mm-hmm. looks like a little fibrotic thread. Sure, yeah, it's it's amazing. And after a while, it's gone. You know, ever, uh, can't even tell that you've been there. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So so. Um, what, so what, time, what sort of time are we looking at when you say that you treated his venous insufficiency? Um, uh, what did you do? Uh, how many of those procedures did you perform and how long was he tied up? Or how, how many different treatments, if any, if more than one did he have to have? Yeah, we, well, we treated both legs. So he was treated over a period of several days. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. In addition to the ablation, we also did what's called microflebectomy, which is to uh, excise or get rid of varicose, the varicose yeah, veins yeah. that he had. He had those primarily in the thigh. Um, and uh, so we did that again over the period of several sure. days. There's not really much downtime. I mean, uh, you know, people are able to go back to work pretty quickly. And- I, I sort of likened it once in the previous show. Yeah, well, you went in for an oil change. The guy said, well, why are you here? Let's change the tires. Yeah. You know, and did. 
Yeah. And, you know, so he was there an extra day, but that's another day that he doesn't have to go back. Sure. Yeah. Right. So what was the um, what was the intention? I mean, obviously, l- knowing the symptoms and, and, and sort of identifying what his condition was and then doing this first part of it, which was the treating the venous insufficiency, was there additional treatment needed? Uh, no, not at that point. Mm-hmm. I, I think we, we kind of did our f- initial phase of uh, evaluation and we were going to treat his uh, venous insufficiency. And then w- it, at that point, it's sort of an assessment yeah. of how he is going to improve or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so he, he did well. He you know flew through the uh, procedures and he came back in three months uh, and uh, his legs were feeling pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had healed well. The achiness, the heaviness, the fatigue, muscle cramping, etc. All of those symptoms that are that are symptoms of venous insufficiency, you know, venous reflux, had resolved nicely. So we were happy about that. Yeah, of course. Now, and and obviously, time is is the healer, especially if you are, are getting treatment for it. But I do know that also that, along with what we've been saying from the very beginning, that this is not going to cure the cause. It 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 it. it it ends with the other result, but it would. It also must be easier once you do all of this work to keep an eye on somebody. Oh yeah, to prevent other stuff from getting so where it really needs big type of intervention. You can do it a little easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. Well, and in him in particular, mm-hmm. you know, since we felt like there were probably other issues going on yeah. with him, we needed to keep a pretty close eye on him and assess what benefit yeah. he got from the procedures we did, and uh, and again. We, uh, we he seemed to have a good resolution of the symptoms that we commonly see. That Strictly, are associated first of all, the pain with venous you know, reflux. Yeah, pain's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what didn't happen, however, is that he didn't have that much uh, resolution of the swelling or enlargement of his yeah. legs. Darn, he said. So, <laughs> so, so we have to reconsider. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, it's not it's not like we you know waited until then to kind of you know consider other things because we were sort of doing this all at the same time. But um, the the key to his uh, his underlying problem, or one of his underlying problems, was really the uh, physical examination. Uh, and how he looked when he presented. Um, he had swelling and brownish mm-hmm. discoloration, and all of that was, uh, you know, pretty routine. But he had relatively normal looking feet, and there's yeah. not, uh, you know, there, uh, when you look at the number of different things that can cause, you know, enlargement or swelling of the leg, uh, most of them are going to also affect mm-hmm. the foot. Yeah, the um, he had uh, enlargement, especially of the left leg, that went right down to the ankle, and uh, the the tissue of the leg actually sort of draped. Oh boy! Over yeah. the ankle, mm-hmm. um, and again, you know, on top of these normal looking feet. So there's it, it seemed like there was a, a more than usual amount of fatty tissue within his mm-hmm. legs, uh, and that's what causes that draping sort of appearance. Um, but so basically just by physical examination, uh, we, uh, we had felt like probably a condition called lipedema. Okay. I've or, heard of that. Or lipedema. Yeah, lipedema, yeah. Uh, it was a, uh, a part of his story and he had a sort of a classic physical examination, mm-hmm. uh, that would be consistent with, uh, uh, lipedema. Um, and, but again, are we going to ignore the venous insufficiency uh, because he's also got uh, lipedema? Well, no. We're yeah, it's not treat- a coin flip. You know, yeah. You, and really, there's not, uh, there's not uh, an easy way, and we're going to talk about it here in a minute, but there isn't an easy way to, to treat uh, lipedema. There are ways to do it, surgical mm. sort of things, uh, but we really want to get we we want yeah. to do the things that are pretty easy, which is uh, treating the venous reflux and see what at what point we can get him. Yeah. You know, can we get him to a point where it's going to be his leg is going to be comfortable and functional and he's happy with it? So, well, you know what you're learning here, folks. I hope first of all, go to Vein Clinics of Hawaii and check it out. There's lots of different ways you can click on different parts of information, even including our radio buttons down the road. But I want to let you know that in many cases, what you're talking about here is lifestyle changes and, and a better life. We're talking about 
uh, I don't want to say a bucket list, but a reverse bucket list. You're going to start to be able to do more things. And I guess the crowning achievement is that each time you have a little victory, when they come back to you and say, well, Doc, it's still swollen, but at least I can walk a little easier. So, I mean, some of these things that have multiple reasons to occur, each time you eliminate one, you got a better chance of seeing what's left, how do we get rid of that part? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how yeah, we approach yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So... um Anyway, so what, what, what is lipedema? Well, lipedema is an abnormal deposition of fat, uh, and typically it's in the lower half of the body, uh, primarily in the legs, mm-hmm. but also through the hips and buttocks. Uh, and uh, the hallmark is this fatty ring of tissue right at the level of the ankle that I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And often you'll, you'll see this sort of draping of the yeah. fatty tissue over the ankle. What about uh, at, the upper, at the upper end of the lower body? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you see it and you know that somebody, it's not within somebody's control mm-hmm. to have a big caboose. Right. But, you know, it happens. Exactly. And, so, and I'm thinking that it wasn't diet related. You know, it was this person, thanks to... I don't know, grandma or somebody mm-hmm. uh, inherited this thing, right. and, and and they must and they get frustrated for their whole life that they can't do anything about it, no matter what they do. Yeah, it's just that's their body shape, right? Um, well, then that's exactly it. And you know, uh, it it occurs primarily in women, although uh, you know, I've our, seen our some big, guys do. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah men yeah, have yeah, it too. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you know, surprisingly, it happens. Some extent of lipedema happens in up to 11% of women. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. That, that, yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah, that's a fair amount. And and again, unfortunately, uh, you, you're right, you know, exercise and all that sort of thing, it, it usually mm-hmm. doesn't have a tremendous impact. Uh, but um, it usually happens from the waist down. So, I mean, you, and you see, I, I think what you're alluding to is you see this all the time. You know, somebody can can look pretty proportional from the waist up, mm-hmm. but from the waist yeah. down, like you say, yeah, like I, this doesn't even look like the same person. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's how it looks, and uh, the legs uh, can sometimes be tender. Mm-hmm. Uh, often they uh, bruise a little easier yeah. than uh, normally, um, and uh, the the leg takes on a. A uh, column sort of appearance is what they how they describe it. So it's just that it's big all the way down, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, lipedema can actually at some point impair lymphatic flow. So you know we've talked about sure you talk about the veins. Let's talk about the lymphatics. Yeah. yeah. So you know, and we've talked about this thing called lymphedema, mm-hmm. which is another you know cause for uh, lower extremity uh, swelling. And the longer the lipedema is around, uh, the more likely mm, that yeah. person may be developing also lymphedema. So, you know, unfortunately, all lymphedema and venous insufficiency often go hand in mm-hmm. hand. I mean, yeah. we see a tremendous number of people with venous insufficiency that also have, uh, you know, what we call lymphedema, which means the fluid is, just isn't moving through the lymph channels the way it should. Um, and, uh, so, and unfortunately, lymph, lymphedema is something that we can't, we don't have easily, easily done surgical interventional kind of things, at least at the moment. And yeah, well, you know, here's another interesting thing, gang, in case you were wondering why we don't talk about medicine a lot and pills a lot, because it's, it's, unfortunately, you can't just go down to the doc's office and get a pill and make the lymphedema go away. No. Uh, there are some things that people use on, on edema, period. I mean, whether it's a diuretic, which makes them, I guess, just pee out. Mm-hmm. You know, they say. But, but I'm not sure that the body knows specifically what liquid to go get. It just go gets whatever liquid it can. It, it, it well, it's eliminating yeah you know, fluid in general from the body. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not it's able not to say going out of that let's toe. Go, yeah. Let's, let's go, go down to the, the leg. toe first. Just right. get that fluid yeah, out yeah, of there. No. So yeah, that's the problem with diuretics. Mm-hmm. But but some people are treated, you know, for lower extremity edema with diuretics, and sometimes it has, has yeah. an effect. But if you don't correct the mechanical problem, sure. Which often, yeah. uh, especially as it pertains to lymphedema, venous insufficiency, etc., it's a mechanical problem. You have to address that. Yeah, and by the way, when you say mechanical problem, you mean that there's not a a pill for it. Right. You know, you got a mechanical issue. It's not going to be done. It's not going to be done no, by drink this. It's not going to be yeah, a medication. Yeah, 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 it's going to be a, a mechanical yeah, yeah, sort right. of resolution. So, so, so some things are correctable. 
Oh, yeah. And some things, uh, I guess you can make them better. But I'm thinking that I've never seen you say no, that we can't do something. There's always something we can do. Yeah. Let's, let's investigate what it is and if the effort will be worth the return. Right, right. So uh, so what is the cause of lipedema? And uh, it, unfortunately, no. we don't know exactly what causes it, but it seems to um, have a hormonal component uh, it often starts during puberty, mm-hmm. during pregnancies, and during menopause. So those are three very hormonally active yeah, yeah. periods in the in the time in, in over the course of uh, a woman's lifetime. And uh, we see we seem to see lipedema arise at, at those uh, points at those junctures. You almost don't want to be a teenager again, having to go through acne uh, yeah. all, and all of the things. That, yeah. Oh my goodness, you know. Yeah. So, uh, by by the way, is this rare among younger younger kids or younger? Yeah, boys? I think it's probably rarer mm-hmm. with with the younger age group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the the it, we say that it's about eleven percent of women, but that's eleven percent of all of those stages. Right, right, you know. Right. So, and I think it probably happens a little less less yeah. so uh, at, at that puberty stage. You know, this is the first. Uh, this is the first um, generation that I have seen and, and on my regular shows been talking with a lot of people that they are way more inquisitive. They want to know what's in their food. They want to know what, you know, dis- I mean, I'm not talking about every kid because most kids think the three main food groups are burgers, fries, and soda, right? Yeah. But, but, but those that are in families that do pay attention, you'll see them in the grocery store saying, don't buy this, mom. Look at ingredient number mm-hmm. one. That's mm-hmm. pretty, that's encouraging, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I mean, I, I've seen that even in my own children. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they have always been much more concerned about uh, you know what they're putting into their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, when I was young, we just ate whatever. Whatever is there, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're they both. Uh, I mean, they're, I have two adult children, but they they are just like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're yeah. looking at labels and they're being concerned about uh, you know where it came from and how it was produced and all that stuff. And I think yeah. that over over time, we're finding out that that is very important. So this guy that we're talking about today, our case study, uh, is well into his certainly well into the examination and prognostication part. Yeah. And then, then he gets into the treatment part right. where he treated his venous insufficiency. Um, and I'm guessing with the normal things that we've talked about before, the injections, uh, you know, sclerotherapy and, and that kind of stuff. And then what? Well, then we, uh, at that point in, in this particular patient now, we have to decide as to whether we're going to uh, address the, the lipedema. Mm-hmm. And um, the, with respect to the treatment, you know, unfortunately, there is no cure for this disease process. But that doesn't mean you want, you want to try and manage it the best you can. Um, right, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But we still want to try to do as much as we can. I mean, sure. you know, venous insufficiency is not a curable problem. Mm-hmm. People, usually it's genetic and that it goes on, but we treat, you know, problems yeah. as they arise. Uh, diet and exercise the, are good. I mean, those mm-hmm. are important, but unf- unfortunately, they don't have a tremendous impact on actually getting rid of the you know fatty tissue of the leg. Um, there is something called complete decongestive therapy, and it has to do with uh, three modalities. And uh, these are similar to what we typically do also for lymphedema. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of the one of the modalities is massage. It's manual lymph drainage massage. And it's a, you know it's a, it's massage of the legs done in a particular way mm-hmm. to stimulate flow of that fluid upward, and uh, and hopefully relieve at least in part the whatever amount of swelling and uh, enlargement of the t- soft sure. tissue of the leg we can accomplish. You know, sometimes people get worried about too much or too hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and obviously most patients will let somebody that's massaging them know if it hurts, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and so you have to back off them a little bit. Um, are there ways that, uh, say, significant others and whatnot could be trained to help their their loved one sure. with some of these conditions? Because self-massage is in... You're kidding. I mean, you might be able to do your your, your ankles or your knees or something, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's that's very possible. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know, I think there there are usually usually it's physical therapists um, and uh, th- physical therapy, uh, you know, uh, organizations that mm-hmm. address 
uh, lymphatic massage and all that sort of thing. But could a family member be trained how to do it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's you know great guy. Nobody likes to see a family member not comfortable. You know, it's here, Papa, let me get you a cushion or whatever. Yeah. Um, but here, Papa, let me rub that out for half an hour. That sounds a little bit better to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. But so, so this guy, it seems like this guy is um, is being pleased. I mean, he's, he's getting somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, and in, in when I saw him uh, again at the three-month mark after his procedures, he was relatively happy because mm-hmm. he had, he, he's had, re, you know, resolution of at least some of his symptoms. And uh, so he was happy the way that he was, the way his legs were feeling, but he wasn't, you know, completely happy about the way his yeah. legs were looking. Sure. So, um, Which so is a big in, slice of it, gang. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so in addition to massage, then we also do compression therapy, mm-hmm. graduated compression stockings, but he's been in stockings for a long time and it hasn't really, you know, made much of, uh, it had much of an impact. And then uh, physical mobilization is the other, the third part of that, uh, you know, decongestive therapy. Uh, and that just has to do with physical therapy in general, physical activity and uh, et cetera, you know, exercise. So um, we uh, then the question then becomes, um, does the patient feel like their, you know, uh, problem warrants surgical intervention? Mm-hmm. And because uh, there is a surgical option for it. Uh, in the past, there was uh, what we would refer to as an open surgical procedure to basically excise excess fatty tissue yeah. of the leg. Um, but more so in recent years, we've gone to using liposuction. I was going to ask about that because it seems that uh, there have been uh, new ways to treat the old the old problem. Sure. And I do know that, however, that you know liposuction is in many cases a um, not elective process. I mean. You know, if it's strictly cosmetic, they say no. But in this case, it looks like it might be a a medical a treatment that would be approved. A medical necessity, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, it, yeah, it probably would be covered mm-hmm. by insurance. Yeah. Um, now we don't do that procedure, um, and there are you know there no, there aren't a lot of people uh, across the country that do. However, mm-hmm. there are centers uh, yeah. you know in various parts. Of the are country. there any risks to that? I mean, there's risks to everything. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if you're if you have a vacuum cleaner in there, uh, are you ever in danger of vacuuming something up that you didn't want to vacuum up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the uh, you know the the concern with treating uh, you know lipedema mm. surgically is that you know what other tissues mm. are you disrupting? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the reason I ask is because a doctor friend of mine years ago, when when they started talking about this liposuction. Said that you know this is uh it's a, it's very scary mm-hmm. you know because uh, first of all it doesn't make a person stop creating more fat cells I mean you know you you take out a whole bunch of stuff unless you make a lifestyle change it's coming back right you know and and you don't want anything to come back and have to go back and to do the same thing over and over again yeah to expect a different result doesn't make sense yeah, yeah. well yeah. in this situation the the thing that you would be most concerned about are disrupting the lymphatic channel mm-hmm, sure yeah. because uh you know we're we're already dealing probably with some component of lymphedema also mm-hmm. in in addition to the uh or lipedema and uh so you know getting rid of fat yeah. is good for, you know cosmetically for the for the leg and probably functionally for the leg uh, but you have it's a balance, you know. You don't want to do something that's going to create more yeah, swelling, that's right? Sure, yeah. and uh, disrupting the lymphatics would would make that happen. You know, I, I I really like this part of the conversation because if you're out there thinking, uh, by the way, you can't make an appointment at Vein Clinics of Hawaii tomorrow for liposuction, not going to happen. But I think what you're going to find out is that you're going to be exposed to uh through Dr. Julep and his staff and on all the islands is the things that are available and the other things that you can do. And I do know that there's this great uh renewed sense of uh, you know referrals going on amongst a, a lot of you that are uh realizing you know we work together we can make people you know cure people sure. uh, a little bit quicker and not have to go into something that we're not interested in doing. I mean maybe doing liposuction is the last thing on your list of I want to do that someday. 
Right. You know? Yeah, and uh, in, in this, especially uh, for this this type of patient, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty specific, you know, yeah. f- type of and form of liposuction. Uh, the technique is a little different than you would do for cosmetic issues. Yeah. By the way, the reason I said that is I know somebody that did it more, more than a lot of times. And it just kept coming back. Yeah, it's like it's like you, you take it all out and you look great for about a week, and then poof, here it comes yeah. back. In. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, if yeah. you're doing it for aesthetic or, yeah. or cosmetic reasons, you really yeah. have to kind of implement a, a yeah. lifestyle change yeah. too. Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't yeah. happen. No. So hard to do. Okay, so uh, going on down the road, where are we now with this guy, mm-hmm. and where are we going? Well, he's he's in the process of making that decision. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in the process of uh, does he really want to uh, seek out a, a surgical, a potential surgical remedy for his legs, and uh, and we'll we'll be helping him do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be helping him if he if he chooses. We'll be helping him get to uh, somebody who does this kind of surgery and uh, mm-hmm. have him evaluated. And uh, you know, the the ultimately it'll be up to the patient and whoever the you know person is doing the procedure and whether they feel like they can you know have a substantially yeah. positive impact on on the you know on his leg well you know and there's all kinds of different levels gang you know i mean some people they get their haircut every 6 months sometimes when was the last time you had it i don't know uh some people every 2 weeks so it it really matters is where you are mm-hmm. and and as long as it seems to me what you have done is curtailed a lot of the bigger issues that this guy was dealing with and gotten him down to where he's more manageable. And obviously he's happier because he's coming into your office being able to do more things than he did before. Sure. Yeah. Back again. From a symptomatic standpoint, he's, he, yeah, he's had substantial improvement. Uh, and that might be enough for him. Sure. You know, that might be enough, but, um, you know, that final decision will be on his part. So, so yeah, you know, the, um, the, the thing here is that, you know, uh, swelling, of the legs can ar- arise from a whole a slew of different reasons. Often it's more than one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we treat what we can to, uh, you know, lessen the signs and symptoms and uh, then kind of just go from there and uh, attack the other causes. Okay. Now, so the, uh, the compression of time, how long has it been? Uh, I forget in the very beginning when we first started, when you first met this guy and how long you've been treating him. He had been in compression stockings for quite a while. Mm-hmm. It was it was more than a year. Okay. Um, so yeah, he had a he had a good long course of uh, attempts at uh, you know uh, using compression as his primary treatment, and uh, it wasn't working. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, uh, his his leg was slowly getting larger, even yeah. in the face yeah. of wow. using the yeah. compression, and you know, that would be that would be expected with this process that we call lipedema. Okay, if you want to know more about this or anything, we're going to want you to come to the uh, Vein Clinics of Hawaii website. Vein Clinics of Hawaii website. One one of the things that I think is important here is that there is a way to get you identified and get you examined. And then lay out a treatment plan. And I've noticed that every time I've been there. And also I've noticed a few other things uh, when I've been there. And that is some really fun stuff. Um, and we'll do a whole program on the aesthetic part of what Doc does in, in, in down the road. In the meantime, uh, please visit www.veinclinicsofhawaii. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Uh, we'll see you next time. And go out and have some fun. And don't worry about it because we got you covered. Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show.